What's up guys? Welcome back to Surf and Turf Travel and Tech Talk with Turf. Today we're doing a follow-up episode from the last one, HDR, which is actually a switch up to manual HDR through Photoshop. It's actually my favorite because it, I think it creates the best images possible with your bracketed photography. If you don't know bracketed photography, watch this one first. All right, here we go. All right, guys, thank you for joining me today. We are talking HDR photography, but we are talking about manual edits. Okay, here's how I, here's why I like manual edits better than I like uh, the Lightroom version of HDR photography. If you haven't seen it, make sure you watch this one first. Okay, uh, it's gonna give you better pixel quality and more control. Okay, anytime I can get more control and not let the software do it for me, that is what I want, okay? So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna take one image that has blown out whites, okay? And one image that has crushed blacks. We're gonna combine those images together so that we can create what is called high dynamic range images, all right? So let's jump right into it. I know this is a, just an iconic photo. Um, so you can see here, it was right during sunset. The sun was just peeking over the tip of the canyon. My God, it was beautiful. But the dynamic range exceeded that of my camera. Okay, so I needed to do bracketing. So I did bracketing on five images and I got a couple images I can work with. Okay, so uh, this one, uh, the super bright image, I think I really like. I'm not gonna get a lot of noise down here in the details. This looks really, really good to me. Um, what doesn't look really, really good is the lights. You can see it's blowing out these whites all over the place in the sky. Even the places it's not blowing out, it really just looks bad. It's, uh, I mean, it's just too white. I wanna bring some of that blue back in. Okay, so these last two images have a difference of uh, about 1.4 exposure value. Okay, so that's 1.4 stops. And I really like the blue and the look here, the kind of dramatic shadows. Uh, and I know that if I'm, if I'm gonna do this method in Photoshop, I'm gonna have some control over how much I reveal so we don't make it look too fake. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna select my dark image. I'm gonna press shift or control. I'm going to select the next image. I'm gonna right click, and then I'm going to do uh, edit in, and I'm gonna open as layers in Photoshop, okay? Okay, I'm back, I'm back in the zone, here we go. All right, so I have my dark image on top, I got my lighter image on bottom where I have the blown out sky. Really, all I'm doing for HDR on this is I'm replacing the sky, okay? I know what probably some of you more advanced photographers are thinking, you're like, oh, okay, okay, Turf. So you, you took basically an image that has like a perfect horizon where you can just totally erase that sky. Like, okay, fine. Yeah, I did for an example here. It gets a lot more complicated when you have, you know, framing with trees and things like that. But I want you guys to get the idea of how to do this in Photoshop uh, with a fairly straightforward picture. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask. Uh, masks are super important if you wanna use Photoshop at all because what it allows you to do is to bring things in and then bring them back if you need to. Okay, that's the difference between using the eraser tool. If you use the eraser tool, it's much harder to bring something back. So I'm gonna go down here, you see this, this is super important, here's the mask tool. I'm gonna create a mask. It does nothing to the image, okay? It just creates this white box next to it. So what, what is this white box next to it? This white box tells me that the total image is revealed. That's what that tells me, okay? So remember this phrase, black conceals, white reveals. 
Okay, we got that. With the mask, white has revealed the entire layer. I want to hide the layer. So what do I do? I'm going to press Command I. All right, so that is going to reveal the layer underneath because it fills that mask with black. The objective here is to reveal as much of the sky as necessary in order to achieve the results of the image that I want. Okay, so the way that you do that is you're gonna switch to white brush, okay? Make sure that your black layer is selected. I'm gonna go to my brush tool, okay? The most basic of all things in Photoshop. It was the first thing that existed in Photoshop was the brush tool, okay? So you must know the brush tool. I'm gonna go up to opacity. Opacity is super important because the lower opacity that you use, the more accurate and the more specific that you can get. Okay, I feel really comfortable with Photoshop, so I'm gonna bring mine down to about a 20, 24, sure. That sounds good to me. Uh, if you are new, I would bring it down to like 12% and just take your time revealing the portions that you want to reveal, all right? Changing your hardness of the brush and doing more strokes and then removing some things. And I mean, don't get too crazy because then it starts looking weird. But uh, overall, the lower opacity that you use, the more flexibility that you have, also the more patience you need to have, okay? <laughs> Photography is a process, you have to have patience. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use a 24% opacity. I have my white selected, and this is all black, white conceals, black reveals, so I want to reveal. So I'm gonna make my brush size just about the size of the sky. Right now I have my hardness at 36. I don't want it that high. I'm gonna bring mine down to about 10%. A lot of people will tell you to bring your hardness down to zero. I think that you as a photographer need to have more feel for what the hardness of your brush does. I know with a straight line across here that if I use 0%, I'm gonna start bleeding into the uh, the foreground. I don't wanna start bleeding into the foreground. In fact, I, I think I'm even gonna take it up to maybe 15, 15%. Uh, because I wanna get a little bit more specific. That allows me to create a brush that's about yay big that I can do these large wiping strokes across, okay? So I wanna start out of the frame. I wanna click once, notice my flow is at 100%, okay? I'm gonna sweep across once, okay? So we see that that darkened the image a little bit. This is where the patience comes in, okay? Don't start going crazy, just like going back and forth and clicking and adding in more sky, because in the end, you're gonna spend more time fixing your image than actually just revealing the parts that you want to. Okay, I'm at, I'm at 24% now, which is fairly heavy, uh, just because I, I feel pretty confident about that opacity. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, you start, you start to see these clouds come back into shape. Uh, you can start to see some new clouds form right around here. This isn't quite as bright, bright white. And I think I'll do one more pass. Okay, what I don't want to happen is it for, for it to look unreal, where the luminosity of the sky matches the luminosity of the foreground. That's just not how your eyes see it. That's not how anybody's eyes see it. So really what you're doing is you're adjusting for the inefficiencies of your sensor. The way that your eye sees light is up to 30 stops of light. Okay, that's for a standard person with 20-20 vision that doesn't have any problems with their cones or rods. For a camera, you're only seeing half the amount of light, okay? So you don't see a picture the same way that you see it with your eyes. All you're trying to do is achieve with your image what you would see with your eyes. So, 
in order to do that, you still need to make sure that you have a lightness to your sky. You don't want to just like paint that in at 50% opacity because it's just going to look like shit, you guys. I mean, just, just don't do it, okay? Take your time, even at, you know, 15, 20% opacity and just paint it in. I think I'll do one more full cross with it. I think that that is looking really, really good. Um, I, I, I really feel like I'm almost done. Thank you, God, for making nature the way it is, where as you go down to the horizon, it gets lighter and lighter. So I can keep my brush kind of above this area and it still looks natural. Um, and I mean, that, that gives you a huge, huge advantage. Uh, let's do one more once over and just see what it looks like. Uh, I, I don't, I don't hate it. Let's go one more over. Okay. I still, I still don't hate it. I can, and I can do some adjustments. I'm going to do a click here. Really the only kinds of clicks that I do are long swiping brushes or a lot of individual clicks in certain areas. It's really the only way that I've found that you can effectively get that smooth transition between what it is that you're trying to reveal and what it is that you're trying to maintain as your original image. Um, in this one, I feel good. You know, you can always check by hitting backspace. Okay, so if I hit backspace, I can see all that has not been touched and how much has been revealed. Okay, I think that looks really pretty good. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna flatten this image, I'm gonna hit uh, Command or Control, Save. That's gonna save directly back to Lightroom. That's not that new, it's been within the last two years, but as long as you open an image within Lightroom, bring it into Photoshop with the open as layers or um, edit in Photoshop, it'll save directly back to Lightroom, which is absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna go back to Lightroom. Okay, and now I have this beautiful, probably uh, maybe 18 to 20 stop image that's been HDR'd manually in Photoshop to an image that is readable by the histogram. You see that there's only that little point in the sun that's clipping and there's almost no way to avoid that unless you start doing overlays. Um, but this I'm going to be way more happy with than trying to take this image and lower the highlights and bring up the shadows to a point. I mean, it just looks, uh, I think Photoshop is probably the way to go if you can get away with it. Um, I, I don't like, I don't like this look at all. Even with the darker image, let's say I tried to bring up the shadows to compensate, uh, bring up the exposure a little bit, which gets me close to the exposure that I have before. But if I zoom in, uh, undoubtedly, I'm going to get all sorts of this noise in here and and artifacting and things like that that's what i want to avoid i mean that's what really separates good photographers from amateur photographers is being able to create an image with high quality pixels especially in really challenging light formats all right that is it guys go ahead and put comments in the comments section if you have questions hit that like button hit the subscribe button i want to keep producing more of this stuff for you guys so give me suggestions on what it is that you want and uh i'll catch you next time